Hi, my name is Chris Kurzik from the Bandura System, and this video is an in-depth discussion about all the parts on a Bandura, the materials of construction, a little bit about how the Bandura is designed. The topic at hand will be specific for the KM class of Banduras, which includes the Chernehi Bandura, which you see here, and the, the, the type of Bandura I own, which is called a, a Prima Bandura, which is a, a Kia Bandura with a mechanism. I hope you enjoy this video and find it very interesting. Let's start with the parts of the Bandura. First of all, we will start with the head, which is at the top on the right side. It consists of a scroll, which is just like what you would find on a lot of stringed instruments, like a violin, for example, you've got a, a bass, a tuning pin box. Box at the top is where all of the pins, the tuning pins congregate, and they're typically screwed right into the wood of the, um, of the head. And of course, you've got the nut. The next part is the neck, number two followed by the soundboard number three and we'll talk a little bit later about how important the soundboard is four and five is the sound hole and the rosette six and eleven is the bass bass and treble bridge next is seven and nine which is the the strings the, basically the bass and the, the treble strings and we have a lower peg box at the bottom and uh, the body sides and back and the string post which is item number 12 and the tuning the treble tuning box pin box and that's what we have okay I'm going to talk a little bit more detail about the base head on a bender and naming all the parts a little bit of information the, the one on the left is called a Prima style Bandura, and it's typically a Bandura with a mechanism. And the one on the right is a more traditional, older style, Chernehu style Bandura, but it's essentially the same Kiev class style of Banduras. And uh, they're, they're very similar, but there's some differences. The, the, for example, the, the nut or the threshold, which you find on, on guitars, uh, the purpose of that is to, to hold the strings into place at a specific length rigidly so that the, um, the string's length doesn't move when it plays. And inside the, tu the peg box there, where all the tuning pegs are screwed straight into the... Um, into the head uh, this is how you, you basically tighten these um, tuning pegs and you get a higher pitch and vice versa you get a lower pitch if you loosen it the scroll is is following a tradition with other stringed instruments like the violin and so on and uh, there we go here's a close-up of the base nut or threshold, you can see how how the, it's designed. You can see the notches in each of these these uh, designs. The top one is a Chernehi style, the older style, and the bottom one is a Prima style, which is a more modern design. They incorporate metal as an as a nut and they they put a groove in there to ensure that the string does not um, wobble the string is free to move along inside that that notch when the string is tightened for to get a higher pitch but once it's it locks it in there so that when a, a key or a string is struck there's um, it doesn't transmit the sound into the head. It, it basically uh, keeps the length uh, very precise. Now the soundboard, like all stringed instrument, is one of the most important parts of an instrument. For example, a, a 
a violin, for example, or a guitar, a lot of a lot of thought goes into it, and it has because it's one of the key ingredients to pr producing an excellent sound. And the bandura is no different. The sound or top is the most important component on a stringed instrument. I can't say that enough. It creates a musical vi vibrations when the string is strummed, and the string transmits the vibration to the soundboard through the bridge. And I'll talk about the bridge in a, in a second. Now, there's a lot of interesting things about the materials that have been developed over a long period of time. But essentially, uh, most soundboards, including a bandura, is made from spruce and cedar materials. The traditional um, material for a bandura soundboard is spruce. And but there's uh, cedar is also has been considered and is used in a lot of other soundboards as well, and they have desirable prof, uh, properties. The soundboard is constructed from a thin flat plate of resonant material, and uh, basically I'll talk a little bit more about the materials of construction. Now, if you take a little closer look, you're going to see three different styles of, of uh, spruce boards. And I'll talk a little bit about that because most banduras are, are made from these. So you've got the one on the left is called a Sitka spruce. The, the middle in the middle is called an Engelmann spruce. And the third one on the right is a European spruce. And it has a, all kinds of names. The German people call it the German spruce, or it's also called the Carpathian spruce, Norwegian roos, spruce. But I, I, that's why I've written down the Latin name for you. And this is a, the background shows you the textures of the different different woods. But notice the characteristic of of the wood and the board. The it's very straight the grains. And they're all about the same distance apart. Uh, I suspect where the bandura was born, the, it, they used the European spruce. But you see uh, a lot of guitars and other stringed instruments using the Sitka spruce. Now, I spend a lot of time in this chapter of the book talking about, about soundboard manufacture, in particular, how the board is made because it's just that important for sound quality. Sound boards need to be made from quarter sawn instrument grade wood, which is a class of wood. It's more expensive than regular boards, but it needs to be that way for, for a number of reasons. First of all, quarter sawn wood is radially cut to minimize expansion to changes in humidity. Okay. Secondly, the grain patterns are relatively consistent, which makes them aesthetically appealing. Now, there's other other musicians that say that the sound transmits um, better with with a more uniform grain as well. Okay, about the sound hole. The sound hole is the opening or openings in the soundboard located underneath the strings between the bridge and the tuning pegs. And, and a sound hole is certainly not unique to a bandura. It's found in its, its uh, cousins, the, the lute and the guitar. And the sound hole serves the following purposes. First of all, it reduces the, the sound dampening rate. So when a note is struck, the sound is transmitted from the, from the string through the bridge to the, to the soundboard. And the purpose of the sound hole is to keep, is to prevent or, or to reduce the rate at which the sound gets dampened. Um, and so that's the, that's the essential purpose. Now, it also helps to set the resonant frequency of the sound box, which is the cavity underneath the soundboard. And so it, it, expert luthiers will be able to set the, 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 
the, the shape and the size of the hole and the location to get the best sound out of out of your instrument and of course for beautification it's been used for centuries for stringed instruments to uh, beautify the instrument now it's what's interesting is is what i found through studies and scientific studies that the si about the size and the shape. Studies have shown that the center of sound holes contribute least to the air resonance than the edges. This may have led to develop of more complex rosette designs, which is the, the, um, the, the, the design of the sound hole and the, and the beautification of it. So, that this means that having a great big sound hole doesn't really matter as much as, as one thinks in and uh, getting getting the right sound. So this has led to a lot of interesting designs over this over the years. Um, but essentially, most banderas are are essentially round like like a guitar. But I mean, there are a lot of lot of designs out there. There's several holes. There's one in the bottom left that we, I've seen, and it's shaped like uh, a sun. And then you can see also how the uh, the sound holes have been beautified. There is one on the bottom right side. Um, an artist. Um, that I know has a business and they beautify banduras and, and with um, the rosette design around them. An essential part of a bandura is the sound box. The sound box consists of the back, the sides and the neck of the bandura and it's a it's designed to be very rigid to hold back the forces of the the strings which are which are causing trying to cause this, this bandura to collapse desired properties of these parts also are lightweight because they contribute a lot to the overall weight of the bandura and bandurists prefer to have a lighter bandura it also has good toughness and resistance to splitting under stress because it is the load bearing part of a bandura. This, the materials also requires properties that can naturally dampen out small frequency harmonics produced by metal strings. I've got a couple of pictures I, I've, I found from the factory. You, just to give you an appreciation of, of how much the bandura, bandura sound box needs to be reinforced to prevent it from collapsing under the under all the forces from all the strings in the box okay I'm going to talk about the bass bridge and the treble bridge so what's the purpose of the bridge the bridge is purpose is to transmit the string vibration to the soundboard because we want the string to to vibrate the soundboards because the soundboard transmits the sound to the bo the, bo the sound box and that's what creates the sound. So the bridge has to be located in a good in a precise spot on the span and it's set by experience by the luthier that were the instrument maker the bandura maker or the instrument maker and basically the K of style banduras that I've, all the ones I've seen, they have a separate bass bridge and a separate treble bridge. Notice that the treble bridge, which is located on the top left, has a, uh, the bridge is kind of curved and it's quite long, and the, the bass side is quite straight. The Kharkiv style of Bandura the ones that I've seen uh, consist of a single bridge for both the bass and the, the treble uh, strings. The peg box. The peg box is located at the bottom of the bandura. I'm going to show you three images. The one on the left is a traditional Chernehi KF style bandura and uh, the, the middle one is a more modern bandura the, the ones that they're building lately and the one on the right is 
is uh, a, a Kharkiv style bandura with the tuning pins at the bottom instead of the top. So the one on the left is interesting. Um, it's an anchor point, which means it, there's no adjustment at all. And it, it's um, so basically you have to have a string with a loop to to secure around that section. So it's quite hard actually to, to uh, change strings because the, of feeding that um, the string through the hole and, and then fastening around that peg hole. But you can do it. And uh, the second type is they got away from the, the one on the left because it was more expensive and they've simplified it with a single piece strip with basically peg teeth um, fashioned into a single piece. And, and then this one, the string is fastened around the, um, the peg. For myself, I think the one on the left was actually a better design because um, the, the way the this, this string has to be, is laid out. The one in the middle, you have to somewhat bend the string uh, the, the loop uh, and the string a little bit and it's a little bit harder to uh, get it secure without it breaking. The one on the bottom is interesting and the reason why uh, a lot of benders tend to have the tuner at the top because it's more ergonomic for the musician but the tuning pegs here at the bottom allow for tuning on, on the bottom side of the bandura. Part of the bender is the tuning pin. Now the tuning pin is borrowed from from a dulcimer, and um, it's it's made out of metal, but it hasn't always been a metal pin. the The traditional banderas use wooden pins, and so they would thread a wooden pin directly into the wooden head of the bandura. But the problem with this, with that is, is that it would go frequently out of tune because it it would slip because it's not a, a, a very very tight fit. So they went to to a metal pin, which is threaded into a wooden a hard wooden bandura, and that allowed the pins to stay in tune longer. Notice that how fine the thread is. It's very, very fine. And the reason why it's that fine so that there's a lot of contact surface so that the pin doesn't slip because the pin will try to unwind itself because it's under tension. Now the treble side is the portion of the bandura which the tuning is done. There are three essential elements to the, this side of the treble side. There's the treble tuning pin, which we just talked about. There's the string, and then there's what we call a capstan, but it, it functions the same as, as the nut on a guitar. It, it anchors the, the string so that the length, a vibrating length, is, is set to an exact position. In the old days, the capstan was made out of bone but uh, nowadays it's made out of plastic. And so uh, the string comes down at an angle to the tuning pin and the tuning pin turns and tightens to the desired pitch. Notice that some banderas have a, a plastic type of sleeve, a protective sleeve at the base, and that prevents the strings from scratching the bandera. The tuning mechanism allows a bandura to, to change pitch by a semitone. Just like the, a bandura without mechanism, it consists of a capstan, as you can see on the left, and a, a treble tuning pin. The, the difference is now is the capstan is now metal because it needs to be more stronger, more rigid. Now you can see a second capstan called a, we ca I call the mechanism capstan. 
And in between it, you can see something called a clamp, a mechanism clamp. And what that clamp does is when the banderist wants to change pitch, they, they, they turn a lever and the clamp comes down and it shifts the anchor point where the length of the string from where the bandura capstan is to the mechanism capstan. When you make the string shorter, the pitch goes up. And in this case, the, the, the length is very precisely measured and it goes up by a semitone. The, the bandura on the left is a Harkiv style. It's a, a, a more modern design. And it actually, each string has a, a mechanism built on it. In many ways, it's simpler, uh, but it does take more time to um, change it because you, you have to change all the strings, but it's still very effective. And so in this case, when you, when you want to change by half a semitone, then the banderist has, all he has to do is switch the lever over and there you go. And it has the same effect of changing the length of the string to get reach the desired pitch. Interested in learning more about Banduras? Place your order for the Bandura Musician Handbook for a more comprehensive review. We are on YouTube and Facebook. Please support us by subscribing to the Bandura system. And we're a very proud member of the League of Skilled Bandurists. And we'd love to hear from you. Goodbye for now, and we'll, we'll talk to you soon.